Can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up or something if you can hear us. We're improvising because I didn't want to be someplace separate, having this conversation with the man, attorney general of Black America, and, and my mentor and friend, uh, attorney Ben Crump. We wanted to be able to be here together to simulate as best as possible a real conversation uh, about the only thing that people are really talking about today, and that is the senseless murder of Tyree Nichols. As you probably know, unless you've been under a rock, um, Attorney Crump is representing the Nichols and Wells family. And if you haven't seen the video, I'm not advising you to see the video. All I am saying is that we know for sure that five police officers with no provocation that we can tell whatsoever stopped a young man in the prime of his life, pulled him out of his vehicle, and senselessly beat him, chased him, beat him again, and to the point that three days later, he died. Um, Attorney Crump, thank you so much for taking the time just to talk to us. Where where do we stand on this case now? Well, right now, uh, the family's getting ready for the funeral services on Wednesday, uh, and so that obviously is taking precedence over a lot of the legal proceedings. But legally, Attorney Presley, we're waiting for the toxicology to come back, uh, and then we think we can have a complete autopsy. Remember Dr. Wilson, the brilliant sister, who is over forensics at the University of Michigan, who also did the uh, independent autopsy for George Floyd, did the independent autopsy for Tyree Nichols, and she concluded in her preliminary findings that the internal bleeding that she observed in his organs and in other places was consistent with the beating that she observed on the video. Uh, the kicks to the head, the kicks to the stomach, the punches to the head. She said that was all consistent with fatal injuries that caused him to die. Okay, so you're expecting any day for that to be completed um, once it is completed, will that be made available to the public? It will be. In fact, the hope is after the homeboy services, we will have the autopsy done. And then, you know, we'll have the charges from the criminal court, but we're going to be waiting to see what the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division is going to do. Um, because we think that they were both state violations, Monique Presley, as well as federal charges uh, that should be forthcoming. And you know that well because you were uh, counsel for the D.C. government, and you understand how the state and the federal jurisdictions of a case interact with one another at times. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I mean, what I, what I have said publicly, so I'm not gonna act like I, I'm not gonna say it to you to your face. Is I'm not impressed with the city right now. I know we are seeing more than we have seen, and we are seeing it happen sooner. You know, we saw immediate firing, we saw immediate charging. Uh, but but Attorney Crump, after 11 years working in in defense of the municipality, uh, Chief Ramsey's my former client. Great. Um, I have trouble believing that five officers in a unit like that could conduct themselves the way they conducted themselves and anybody not know what jump out boys are and what they do. No, I think you're absolutely correct that the city uh, may not have exposed the fact that this is a pattern in practice, that this, I guess, uh, crime, organized crime unit, otherwise known as Scorpions, they had a pattern and it's kind of unbelievable to think that conduct that we saw in the video of those officers being so nonchalant about everything they did to Tyree Nichols, that this was a business as usual. In fact, uh, there we have two other African Americans who have contacted us who said that they were attacked 
by the Scorpion unit of the Memphis Police Department. In fact, it was three or four days before Tyree Nichols was killed on January 7th. And he said he called twice to the Memphis Police Department Internal Affairs, and he didn't get a call back. And, you know, who's the same only question? Had they called him back, then Tyree Nichols may be alive today. That's right. That's right. If they had just taken the time to do what is their obligation, especially in municipalities and in federal government, the obligation is to respond within 24 hours of the next business day and to not get a response on something like this where they are reporting on actions that happen to them at the hands of law enforcement, unacceptable. I also got to say, you know, to me, there's no way a department uh, can have a Scorpion unit and a chief say that they have no idea that it's appalling that the manner in which they conducted themselves. And I know I'm pushing Ben, but here's what I'm saying. I, saying I, I am saying that I have worked for three three chiefs okay. of, of municipal police departments in inner cities that had high crime. And there's no way that you can have a unit, staff a unit and not know how that unit gets down. So I'm only seeing a surprise at the cameras getting caught. I'm seeing a surprise maybe that's, that, a, that a black man ended up dead, but I refuse to believe the very media savvy show that I saw, yes, from the chief and from others where everybody's clutching pearls and right. saying, oh my God, this happened. Come on now. So what you're saying they are not upset that they got their hand caught in the cookie jar. They just hate that they got caught. Not the fact that the jump out unit was already bad because they were exalting people and violating the constitutional rights of citizens in certain communities. They are just upset that they got caught doing it. Yes. And had Tyree not died, everything would be just fine. If Tyree hadn't died and it hadn't been come out on camera, it's obvious to me, same as with George Floyd and same as with all of these other criminal actions, state sanctioned violence by law enforcement, until something goes terribly, terribly wrong. In fact, we we know what happened because here's the you're telling us of two other people yep. who were harassed and who towards Tyree, and we know what happened, nothing happened. Nothing happened. So what is it that, other than what has happened already, what they have done already, what are you hoping comes from these investigations? Well, a couple of things. Let me back up before I talk about the investigation, because I want to be clear to everybody who uh, is here with Mo Time. The fact that they were able to terminate these officers, arrest these officers, and charge these officers in less than 20 days is something we need to make note of. Because the chief said, in her own words, that the community needed to see them take action swiftly and that they needed swift justice. Well, if that's the case where Laquan McDonald was killed by the white police officer, when Ron Green was killed by the white police officer, where Alton Sterling was killed by the white police officers, where uh, Lando Castillo was killed by the white police officer, Eric Garner was killed by the white police officer, Pamela Turner was killed by the white police officer, and this goes down and down the line, E.J. Bradford and the mall on Thanksgiving. Why wasn't it important for the community to see swift action on those and swift justice? Because those police officers were caught on video committing a highly questionable act, if not a crime, but they said we needed to investigate for six minutes to a year. And so they can't tell us that anymore. You cannot tell us that because we're going to say when it was five black officers who did bad things on video and a crime, you immediately arrested them. And so we all need to start counting, God forbid, if there's another tragedy similar to George Floyd or Philando Castillo and Eric Garner, we need to start counting the 20 and say, hello, y'all did it on the black officers in 
Memphis. Why can't y'all do it on the white offices in New York with Eric Garner and Monique? If these were five white offices, I wonder how many people would be saying, well, why didn't he just comply? Why, why did he run? And so we don't want to allow them to have a double standard. It doesn't matter if these offices are black, Hispanic, or white. If they engage in excessive use of force, they should be held accountable. Right, right. And I think that there's a difference because some people are using the argument that you just made, which I agree with, to say, oh, it's racism. And and I I believe that there is racism in the application, but it's not that they should not be charged and that it's racist to charge them. It is that the swiftness with which it is done yeah. was sped up because whether we are black on one side of the law or on the other, you see that it's not applied equally. The, the way that it goes is not equal. But that brings up another point, Ben, that you and I have talked about before. I don't think people realize enough that police officers are not black or white. They bleed blue. Yep. They are trained, they are indoctrinated into a system that does not see our humanity. And it doesn't matter whether they're Latino, whether they're black, whether they're white, the way that they treat us is different on the street. And that to me is what we're seeing more than anything, a lack of humanity, Ben. It is we're not lack, seen as human beings. It is a lack of humanity from the moment they interact with him, and which is outrageous. I mean, I don't care what you call yourself, scorpion, jump out board, what have you. You cannot attack the citizen for you profiling them because of the color of their skin. We don't see videos of them doing this to white citizens who are unarmed. But then the inhumanity that they offered to him after he called for his mother, at the end of those videos, he was just laying there, handcuffed on the ground, moaning. And everybody just walking by him like he was a rock on the ground or something, offering him no consideration, no respect, and like you said, no humanity. And that's what the struggle is to make them respect the humanity in us. And Tyree Nichols, we need to be able to get some kind of reform, some kind of rethinking of safety. We got to figure that out and we got to fight. And I know it ain't going to be easy because the makeup of the Congress is going to be an obstacle like it was with George Floyd. But my Lord, how many more videos do we have to show you, America, before you say we need police reform finally? Right, because training is, I, I, I mess up the case, they certainly were not following proper police training if they were trained properly. Let me put that out there first. Okay. Let me say second, it is not that they didn't get training. It is that they are ignoring training for the sake of a whole other kind yeah. of training in the streets. And I'm concerned, Ben, what kind of legislation would keep what happened from happening? You know, you know the legislation I think that would help would be some federal uh, police reform where they get to get all the data from every police department that before we give you funding, that is going to be required. So we can see if there's a pattern and practice already in existence. I know Memphis had three police shootings of uh, black men, uh, and they were suspects, as they say. So if the Federal Department of Justice has all this information, they can try to be proactive. They can go ahead and put them on a consent monitor them. So they will train their officers even more on implicit bias. And it doesn't matter that they're black officers because it's not the race of the police officer that is the determining factor of whether they're going to engage in excessive use of force, but it is the race of the citizens. If it's a black or white citizen, they often, more times than they do with white citizens, engage in excessive force. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Ben. Well, I know you've been going nonstop for days, so I want to wrap, but uh, please just tell us what those of us 
who want to help and support people are watching, they're in pain, um, but what what can they do? Uh, pray for the family. Uh, please write letters to your congressman and your senator telling them that we need to pass reform in the name of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and now Tyree Ty Nichols. And the reason we got to keep writing them is we want the Senate to have a Senate here, and we argue in the court of public opinion. And if we don't get four votes from the House, which is going to be a dog fight because they're all conservatives. But in 2024, we vote remembering Tyree Nichols to try to say, let's try to prevent some of these hashtags from happening quicker than we can keep up. Because without federal legislation, we don't have a stand a chance because every city, every state, every county have different regulations and there's no consistency. And so that's what I believe is a step in the right direction. Also, I think we have to have Tyree Nichols law here in Memphis, uh, just like they had the Brown and Taylor law that abolished them. No, not once. They need to have the Tyree Nichols law that say, very you got to do the intervene police anytime you see a crime. I don't care if it's your uh, partner or your fellow brother in blue. They can do the crime. You got anything. If not, we're going to charge you with federal offense and keep you in jail for 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you can go to jail for the same amount of time as the person who robs the bank and commits the felony because you were in the car driving, you ought to be dealing with the same amount of time as a police officer when you break the law by not doing what your sworn duty is yep. when you are a police officer, and that is to intervene. Thank you, Attorney Crump. I appreciate it. You guys, if this is your first time with me, the name of the show is Make It Make Sense. I hope we've made sense for you today. I am normally on Monday through Friday at noon Eastern. But of course, whenever Attorney Crump can take the time is when I am on. So uh, I want to thank you. Thank you, Attorney Crump. And, thank and, you and, I, and I want to say this. They need everybody accountable who's on that police scene. There was a white officer who had a taser who uh, everybody says, from looking at the video, don't take my word for it, you look at the video yourself, that he should have been arrested too because he was part of it. And also, there's somebody, and we're narrowing it down to this white officer who may have been the supervising officer that said, when they catch him, I hope they stop him. Okay, well, we're going to dig until we get to the bottom, and I'm going to be here providing the best information I possibly can. Um, stay safe, family. Be praying for the Nichols and Wells family, and please be praying for my brother, Attorney Crump, because he's on the front lines for all of us all the time. Thank you. I'll see you uh, Monday noon if I don't see you sooner. Bye-bye. Thank you.